Hi guys, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World on YouTube Medium, Daniel Rosal Tech. My name is Daniel Rosal and this is another video about surprisingly backup. So what I want to show today is a methodology. Methodology is maybe being a little bit kind here, but basically just a way of downloading Google Takeouts a little bit more reliably. So Google Takeouts I've discussed in a previous video. Um, I had it just up here. Uh, this one about using an AWS EC2 instance, a little bit complicated, but what I was showing in this video here was how to use EC2, fire up an EC2 instance in order to download your Google Takeout and then put that up to, I used Rclone, which is basically a command line interface tool based on rsync. Rclone lets you sync to remote sources. So what I did was I basically logged into Google on the EC2 instance, uh, by using a virtual desktop um, and then I basically once I got into the desktop I ran the takeout and you can see here in the video um, I was just testing out the metrics aboard the EC2 instance and the upload speed was a lot a, a lot quicker than uh, what I could get on my internet connection so I basically took advantage of that fact to download the Google takeout on EC2 set up uh, our clone um, and then I um, actually just synced the download up to uh, Backblaze B2 Cloud Storage to give me my whole 321 compliant backup. So that was an interesting methodology um, in terms of something you'd want to use all the time. It's kind of a lot of hassle. You'd need you would be incurring cost for costs uh, for that EC2 instance unless you, you'd have to remember to terminate it. It's a lot of work. So basically what I'm doing now for backing up my Google, and I, ru I run through this process approximately once every few months, let's just say that, um, because you know this is a little bit of work, um, but I think it's work that is worth doing. Uh, just to always have, um, you know, I really have my, besides my desktop, the data I have floating around the internet is in just a few places. One of, one of that is my web hosting. The major one would be Google, um, my Google data, and the third one would be my cloud storage. So cloud storage happens, I can back that up pretty easily um, automatically um, into my Backblaze and down to my computer. Um, I can do my hosting manually, uh, automatically. I have that set up as syncs, sync scripts. And Google is kind of the odd one out because there are these kind of tools for downloading your Google Mail, your Gmail, and your drive and your contacts, but there's nothing, um, even with the Synology, um, the you know the programs that you can access in Synology DSM, there isn't a tool. And I've been looking for this, but I have not. I've scoured the internet and not found this. Looking for something that'll basically pull in incrementally everything you'd get in a takeout. And you can see here, there's 51 products in my takeout. So um, there is a bit of a gap here, and until that gap is filled. I continue, I continue uh, to make sure I'm getting everything out of Google to manually do this. Now there's something important to say about takeouts and that is this. Um, when you run a Google takeout, um, one of the products that you typically click would be YouTube. Now what you get in a takeout in YouTube is the brand account associated with the Gmail address or a G Suite address you're running the takeout from. In other words, if you have multiple YouTube brand accounts associated with that Gmail or that G Suite address, you're not going to actually get those. So what I do, and this is why I had the DSR uh, ghostwriting, exciting uh, YouTube page with four subscribers. Um, for example, this is a brand account that is um, associated with my um, Google over here, and this will not be included because it's not the default brand account for that for this G Suite address. So what I do in practice is whenever I make a YouTube video uh, for this account, I will actually upload that straight away to the NAS. The NAS will then sync that to Cloud Storage. That gives me my 321 backups and that's that. But obviously it would be preferable from my perspective if uh, I didn't have to do any of that manual stuff and I could just put a calendar entry in my diary to do a Google Takeout. Um, so what I do now is I do this Takeout. This will go onto my uh, NAS, and I could do this directly on the NAS actually, but I'm going to just do it on my desktop. 
and then I uh, use Hyper Backup, which is one of the DSM tools. And using Hyper Backup, I just copy the whole NAS onto a uh, flash drive. Um, it could also be onto a, a hard drive enclosure, but I just do a flash drive. And uh, what I will do then is basically um, put that in my car. You heard that right. In my car, in the boot of the car, because there isn't currently, I can't think of a, of a better offsite. It's technically offsite in the sense that if there was a flood or something happened to the apartment, the car would hopefully be okay. It's not an ideal offsite, but you know, um, part I guess part of part of my interest in backups is just uh, is just experimenting. This isn't these these aren't necessarily the perfect or ideal ways of doing things. Um, if I had a better internet connection available, I would probably just mirror it up to the cloud every time, uh, even though that would involve uploading 50 gigs. But uh, my current internet connection of two megabits per second, that is just not practicable. So that's this is the way I've, I'm doing it now. Okay, so basically you're gonna get this uh, email when your Google Takeout is ready and you have your nice little download links. Now, what I do, and uh, here comes the core of the video, just pop, pop open your download manager and uh, what I did basically was just, uh, and you're, you're saying yes, this is, uh, you really made a video for this. Indeed I did, indeed I did. Uh, right click and click copy link address and then you want to get a multi-thread Google download manager. So it doesn't matter if you're not on Linux, if you're on Windows, they exist for Windows, Mac and Linux. So you'll find a tool. Um, I'm just more familiar with Linux, which is what I'm using here. Um, and basically just copy in the, uh, copy that from your clipboard, the URL, and then just click OK. And uh, that did not succeed. So that did not succeed. So what I'm just going to do is try that again over here and just copy again from the clipboard. Okay, so it looks like my download links expired. So I'm just going to go and do that again. Now you can see it's got two or three hours left. I'm just going to explain the rationale for this. And that's basically that if you just download from your browser, you're not going to have, you know, if you use wget on the command line, for instance, you have that continuous uh, continuous feature which is really what you want because it's very possible that you'll be downloading this file this 48 gigabyte archive and your internet connection is going to drop at some point and there's a high high chance that that can interrupt the download uh, so that's why I do this I'm just going to grab this and then what I actually do is put this on pause um, I signed out of my Gmail which is why the um, why the links broke so let's try this again hopefully this time will have better success so I've just gone copy again um, and there we go and that's it so basically do this with each of your um, downloads and you can see uh, the elapsed time the left time now what it, what, what I would do is go ahead after I've initiated that and pause it because we don't need to download it twice and just to confirm 102 that that archive is still downloading still building even though I pause the download in the browser itself so that's my methodology essentially for um, a good way of downloading your heavy and uh, you know this is a 48 gigabyte archive so relatively heavy your Google data and um, after this completes I will be moving this onto the NAS uh, in an ideal world I would then be replicating that to S3 or B2 or you know some other cloud storage um, in the not ideal world in which I live what I will be doing is uh, next time I back up the NAS using hyper backup that'll, that'll copy that'll get um, this on the NAS and uh, copy that to my wonderful offsite uh, backup location, otherwise known as uh, the boot of a car uh, with a hard drive in a box. But hopefully you have a better situation. Could be a friend's house. Could be a. Uh, could be the cloud. I mean, ideally it would be the cloud, but uh, that is how it's done. So hope this video was useful. If you've any feedback or want to get in touch for any other reason whatsoever, please feel free to reach out to me at Daniel Rosal. 2 Wishing everybody a wonderful day.